Welcome back, everybody. I'm happy you're with me today because it's a special day. I am finally working on this backlog and developing film, seeing what I've been looking at and what life has looked like for the last six or seven months or so. So we're going to go through these scans for the first time today together and just have a good time. So I'm glad you're here. Uh, first of all, big thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video, supporting what I do here on the channel. If you are a photographer, I'm going to tell you all about how Squarespace can help you at the end of this video. I started organizing the backlog basically by film type or film speed, some of the film I had pushed. I was trying to kind of prepare myself for developing and get things kind of ready to go. And uh, I remembered I had these five rolls of Delta 400 and I wanted to start with those because I have no idea uh, what was on them. Uh, I kind of have a rough idea now. I've seen a couple of the negatives, but um, just as negatives, we're gonna go through these together for the first time. I meant to buy these rolls in 120, like back in the fall, and rather than returning them, I figured I might as well just shoot them, and I just treated it as if it was HP5. Like I've always shot HP5, and I kind of know what to expect with that film and different lighting scenarios and stuff and kind of how to work with it. I always talk about how forgiving and flexible that film is, but maybe Delta is just the same. I haven't really shot enough of it to be able to, I guess, compare it. So we'll take a look at the film here and just kind of see uh, what's on it and how the film held up, I guess. I remember as I was shooting it, I tried to get a good mix of different lighting scenarios just to make a video kind of like this. So good on me for actually following through with it. Can't believe I actually did that. But I've got everything here in Lightroom. Uh, I scanned everything with a Lumix S1R um, with a negative supply setup, and I'm gonna do a full video uh, kind of updated on my scanning workflow and post-processing all of that uh, here soon. I just don't have everything exactly dialed in yet, but uh, it's coming. I've got all of my film scans in Lightroom here. I haven't inverted them or anything yet, and I normally use Negative Lab Pro, but I haven't installed it on this computer and I can't find the serial number. I'm just going to do it manually until I get around to sorting that out, but that's number like 214th on my list. I should also mention I didn't scan these with the idea of printing or anything like that in mind. Um, if I'm making a scan for a print or a book or something like that, I'm going to take my time to get everything lined up just right to really maximize my resolution or even do like a multi-shot kind of thing to really get more out of it. But I'm gonna have to crop these uh, for the sake of this video, but that's all I have in mind. So I, I can just already hear the comments of someone being like, you're, you're losing resolution, why are you? You know, it's all good. Right off the bat, I can already tell this is gonna be a good way to uh, see how this film held up under a really contrasty situation. This was shot under an overpass while I was sitting there at a red light and uh, looks like high noon, so really, really deep shadows under the overpass there. So we'll crop that out. We will hit V, flip that over to monochrome, do this, do a little bit of that to invert it, and now we're essentially gonna be kind of working in reverse here since we're gonna do this all manually. Bring my exposure up, which is gonna darken it a little bit, but I think that's what I would naturally do, and then maybe I would just move my black point in I hit J, we'll see when it starts to clip, there we go. Also looking at your histogram, keeping an eye on that is a good idea as well. Um, but again, if you hit J, uh, that will preview anything where it's clipping. So now if I'll go up here to the shadows, I can adjust that. That's gonna adjust the highlights now because everything is backwards. I did adjust the shadows a little bit, so I'm gonna adjust the black point one more time. Right there, that looks pretty good. Like for my eye, when I kind of have 35 millimeter black and white in mind, it's pretty good. And uh, let's zoom in here a little bit. Grain looks nice and sharp. There's some uh, surprising amount of detail here. This was shot with the 50 millimeter Sumalux on my M6. I could copy and paste those settings, but lighting scenarios and stuff from frame to frame, it's gonna be so wildly different. I'm probably not gonna mess with that. I'll probably just do a quick little uh, copy and paste of the inversion. Use this photo here to make a little uh, kind of copy and paste template. Monochrome, and then uh, let's flip the tone curve, and then I'll just copy that adjustment alone. Most of them I feel like I scanned in order to preserve the details, so uh, I'll probably need to bump the exposure up a little bit each time. And I'll probably naturally wanna pull the contrast back because I feel like right out of the gate, Lightroom contrast uh, zeroed out is uh, pretty heavy. We're gonna start there as just a starting point. 
So we'll copy those adjustments and uh, let's see, make sure, yep, that's everything we want. Copy that, copy that. And now if we just command V that, <laughs> Elliot, without a doubt, double counting and trying to, to argue with me or change the rules on the fly, guaranteed. The last couple of months there at the old house with my office there in that space, uh, we played a lot of Shut the Box, uh, a lot of different games in that room uh, as I was working through the day. So it's already wild to see uh, photos from that house. And it's we've only been gone a couple of months, but it feels already like it's been a lifetime ago. This one looks like it. <laughs> That's a good one there. The most animated kid ever. I actually do remember these photos here. Um, I remember specifically with sort of a, a exposure test in mind. And he looks like a teenager to me <laughs> right there. My gut reaction is that I actually really like this photo and I don't know why, but hold on, let me get the framing right first. Okay. Yeah, my horizon is all off and it's kind of hard to read, but I, that right there feels right to me. That might feel way off to somebody uh, watching right now and they may be <laughs> very upset, but that I think that feels right. I'm not gonna bother, well, yeah. I was gonna say I'm not gonna bother dusting this. Yeah, I'm gonna dust it. I do think I like that photo. I don't know why. It's a picture of my kid, I'm allowed to like it, but <laughs> I like it a lot. As for the film itself, I mean, that was direct um, end of the day light right on his face and uh, he's wearing a white shirt and it held detail uh, in pretty much all of this here. And granted your shadows, you don't have a ton of detail. You can kind of see his jeans a little bit. We were absolutely between haircuts at this point, I can tell you that much. But yeah, I think overall for, our, I mean, the only light in that room was the direct sunlight on him and uh, it looks pretty good. That was roll one, let's see what we got here. Um, I remember this, this was Elliot at Paper City Coffee. I, rem <laughs> I remember specifically uh, him pointing at uh, an ambulance as it was going by. Paste our adjustments, oh yeah, that, that was the one. And just by looking at this right here, I can tell by the compression it's a 50 millimeter, so this is the 50 Sumalux, but the, the lens itself, it is, it is sharp. Um, I, well, I missed focus here. I was trying to focus on the eye. Looks like I focused more on the bridge of the nose here. Wide open on that lens, it is super shallow. So I was definitely gambling here. I should also add, I get just as many uh, pictures like this as I get any other ones. I remember this, trying to get a photo of this spider on the wall uh, using a 50 millimeter on the M6. That was as close as I could get, so. No, oh, this one of Molly being an absolute babe as always, but this was in basically the, the perspective from my old office uh, through that window there into our kitchen because that room was added onto the house, so that used to be looking into the backyard, but that was the view I would see from my old office all the time. I love that. My old SL2S there that was on my desk, gone but never forgotten. These are awesome to have. Um, just from, from having that perspective uh, specifically. I mean, that was, I, I remember having that thought a little bit, kind of like this is the last time I'm gonna see her through, you know, this sort of like uh, point of view, like where I'm at, where I spend a lot of my time. And it's crazy, that doesn't even feel like home anymore. Oh, this was right after she came home and got her hair cut and we had, bit of a impromptu photo shoot because look at her hold on i mean i'm a very lucky man do a little bit of cleanup work here on the dust i really like the sharpness of this film that's like one thing i'm noticing for sure just as i flip through these um it's clearly like more than capable of retaining you know a contrasty scene and everything i think as long as you're in the ballpark for your exposure, it seems to be just fine. Um, I mean, I, I used it with my internal meter and my M6, but usually I'm kind of just using that as a backup. I mean, if, if you're in the ballpark, usually most black and white film, you're good. Um, and this is clearly capable. I usually don't care about sharpness when it comes to 35 millimeter film, but um, it definitely doesn't hurt. I'm gonna bring the white point way down and uh, I want I just would naturally go for a different look because the the light was like filling the room here 
So I feel like I wouldn't want as contrasty of a look as I normally would go for. The shadows definitely need to come down though. That feel like the, the softness in the light is what I was like really drawn to there. It's another one where I focused a little bit on the wrong eye probably. Awesome. Oh, just melt my heart. Are you kidding me? Oh, that's the best. Right there. Just nothing better. Got some film from Christmas here. I can see that because I can see my uncle Dean. Yeah, there he is. Sharpening it up. Getting ready for Christmas dinner. <laughs> My mom's older brother, this was uh, the first Christmas without my mom, and uh, we had the Christmas here, you know, and, and what was her and, and my dad's home. We still carried on and, uh, you know, had the house full of family just the way we always would, and uh, I, I think that's exactly what she would have wanted. Kids, <laughs> kids running in the driveway, scooting in the driveway. <laughs> She is always on her scooter. This summer, the goal for her and Elliot both, they both are on their scooters all the time. We're gonna get them on skateboards this summer. It's gonna happen. Oh, this one. That looks, oh yeah, my girls. People always say that Molly and Nora look alike and I always see it, but I don't know if I've ever seen a picture of, like I honestly, I don't think I have any pictures like where they're this, side by side uh you know same smile and everything poor kid's gonna have my teeth but she's she looks just like molly i normally don't have that many photos on film um this you know clear and nora engaging with me smiling right at me um normally i have to rely on a digital autofocus camera and just you know spraying and praying it's really hard to get that you know uh that kind of expression out of her without the autofocus, the, the fast frame rate. It looks like on some of these, there was a lot of motion blur too. So I know I was shooting, yeah, I was shooting at like probably a 30th of a second here, I'd say. Yeah, a lot of those are blurry, but I am really, really happy I have this one. Let's take a look at some of these on the last roll and see what we've got. This is one of the rolls where I uh, had my SF20 on top of my Leica. Oh, this was back before we got these gross little skin tags <laughs> clipped off of them. Poor old man was looking rough. We got those all taken care of. This was before that. <laughs> Just looked like a mouse turd hanging off of his mouth, like at all times. Old man. Oh, but the but the big girl. Oh, there she <laughs> This is perfect because um, strawberry. Molly says a sperm egg. I say she looks like one of those little things that you throw at the concrete on the 4th of July. The little snappers, um, they've got a little tail on them. That's what she is. She's just this ball with a little tail. Um, that's Strawberry. She's perfect and absolutely the best thing to ever show up in our backyard. This cat used to eat our trash and we would pull in our driveway and this little white cat would jump out of the trash cans and take off running. Um, I saw her run with like a half eaten like frozen mini corn dog in her mouth and ran out of our trash can. And then a few months later, she was about dead in our backyard and the dogs found her and uh, brought her back to life. That was four years ago. And this cat sleeps with Elliot every night. I mean, she is like a vital part of the family. I guess it wouldn't be right to talk about everyone else and not give Rusi a little bit of shine. She's an old lady. We also adopted her from the shelter, but she was a puppy and it's been eight years of constant anxiety and just panic coming out of this little dog, but we love her dearly. There's not a whole lot going on, like, you know, internally there, but she's a very sweet girl. Oh, this is me and Elliot playing Jenga on my birthday trip we went on. <laughs> we, uh, we went and stayed at the Box Hop. Big thanks to Seth and Emily Britt uh, from the Box Hop. Good friends of mine. They have an amazing place in Hocking Hills in Ohio. Um, I've done a video there in the past if you've never seen it. Um, it's just a beautiful place, but they have a new place that they just opened up and uh, they invited us to come check it out before they open it up to the public um, just because they're kind, good people. And uh, we had a great time on my birthday. It was awesome. And me and Elliot were playing some Jenga while we were there. This was cool. This was something that I had to get the camera out for. 
when it happened because Elliot happened to uh, pick up an Elliot Erwitt book off the shelf in my office that day. He would always be hanging out with me while I'd be working in there, um, and I would just hang out in there, look at photo books, he'd be playing games with me, and one day he happened to see all of the Elliot Erwitt books, and you know, he's at the age now where he's writing his own name, and he's recognizing words, and he was like, oh, that has my name on it. And that was like the time that he sort of found out that that's why like I love the name Elliot because Elliot Erwitt is one of my all-time favorite photographers and that's what you know that's how I came up with the idea to to name our son Elliot and um, talking to him about that and showing him you know some of his pictures and talking about why I love Elliot Erwitt and his humor uh, and so he got the book of dogs out and because that was like an easy tie-in I'm like dude he has a whole book of just dogs and Elliot's like what and he's like he's, he's so excited about it and uh, so I got a couple photos of him as he was sitting there flipping through it just because like, you know, he's he's got my old camera and stuff. And it's like if he enjoys photography and gets into it and keeps going with it, that'd be amazing, of course. But if he never picks it up again, like that's totally fine. Just this little moment alone, um, having some pictures here. Yeah, oh, I love that one. That one right there. Just having that alone, that moment, um, that's the best. Well, that's gonna do it uh, for this video and taking a look at you know Delta 400 and what life has been looking like. Now I'm really excited to keep developing. I had a lot of nerves kind of leading up to the first time I start developing again and actually looking at the pictures. I was getting really comfortable uh, with not having to look at any, any of the pictures I've been making and just sort of like trusting that maybe there's something there. But with this stuff, especially family stuff, um, I figured that would be a good way to ease back into it. So now I'm excited to uh, get back to it. And um, we're going to talk a little bit about growth here, because if you've been here for a while, you might remember when the archiving and sleeving my negatives got way out of control. I had to uh, pay Nathan Herschler to help me out with that. Thank you again, Nathan. This stuff has already been archived and everything ready to go in the binder. so. We're making progress here. Um, I appreciate all of you who have been here with me today. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, let me know in the comments. And uh, if you want to see more stuff like this, I would love to keep doing sort of this like first impression as I import the film scans. Um, let me know. I'd like to do kind of, you know, different stuff like that. Right now, I would love to just kind of keep talking and catching up with you guys, but um, I need to go pick Elliot up from school, and we've got another video coming in a few days, so stay tuned for that. But thank you all so much for joining me. Uh, I had a lot of fun today, and I hope you did too. And of course, last but not least, a huge thank you to Squarespace in supporting me as a photographer and everything I do here, and now I'm going to tell you about what they can do for you. Just about anybody could benefit from having their own website, whether it's for their business or their hobby or a personal project, but photographers specifically, if you don't have a website now in 2022, it's time to change it up. There's really no excuse at this point. Everything you need is built right into Squarespace's service. You can show off your portfolio there. You can run an online store to sell physical or digital products. People can reach out if they'd like to get in touch with you. You can send out email newsletters to keep in touch with everyone. And all of this stuff is super easy to use. They have tons of templates to choose from. You can customize everything to suit your needs in your own style. And of course, as easy as it is, Squarespace is always there to help with 24-7 award-winning customer service. So if you ever need help with anything, you can always just give them a shout. I personally started using Squarespace about a a decade ago and that was years before they ever sponsored this YouTube channel because they have been the best for that long. So if you want to try Squarespace out for yourself you can do that entirely free at squarespace.com but when you're ready to launch go to squarespace.com slash matt day that'll get you 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. So thank you again to Squarespace for all of their support for me and what I do here on the channel.